Good morning. This is uh, Conrad Vargas, the old desert naturalist again. I want to welcome everyone to the show. Today I'm with a dear friend, Jack Lockwood, who I was a high school chum of mine, and his dear wife, Marty. He's a volcanologist over here. That means he deals with volcanoes. And Marty, she's a botanist. She deals with plants. Where's Reservation Land? They own a whole bunch of land clear up to Mecca. Earthquake uplifted all of these. And Marty, this over here, right at the point, you see those rocks are this way. If you look at the to the left, that little knob that sticks up, it's flipped over. Mm -hmm. It's upside down. San Andreas Fault did this quite a few thousand years ago. So one piece of land would do this, and the other one is doing the other thing. It's the most fat that got pushed up and down. It's the San Andreas moving these laterally. And the problem is the fault's not straight. Yeah. And so if the fault's got a bend in it, and a block moves here and it hits this, it gets all crunched up Absolutely. just by moving. Absolutely, because the fault doesn't run straight and true right. through this spot right here. Right. It made made big jags. Right. But that's what was happening. That's what happens at Long, uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. exactly. The earthquake comes in and makes a real hard uh, right. left turn. Right. And man, those people over there get whacked because right. the quake doesn't like to make a hard left turn. Right. Gets into Long Beach and makes another dog leg and Long Beach gets smacked. Yep, yep, yep. And when the plates smack together at high angles like that, it, it causes the, a lot of a lot wider zone to fracture and you've got subsidiary faulting going off and it gets really cold. That's, LA Basin, you know, out there understanding yeah, it, it. You know, the thing that is so interesting is that we had, back in the 50s, we had a friend that was I'm not sure where he lived. All I know is it was over this direction, and he had a dirt road going into his house. So we went over to visit him that night, drove back out on the road. Next morning we drove over. The road had shifted like three feet. We had a quake during the night. Didn't feel it. Didn't <laughs> right. feel it. But it changed his road. Our tracks went here and then jumped over. And so we're dads out there taking pictures of it. And uh, I was excited, but we didn't feel it. People who lived in that property didn't feel it. Mm -hmm. Now that one that hit a Mexicali, which went up the Anza Fault, not on the San Andreas, we felt that rascal. Mm -hmm. For a Hawaiian geologist, this is really exciting because we don't have these kinds of rocks in Hawaii. Everything we have are volcanic rocks. We don't have sediments and sedimentary rocks. And, and uh, whatever our rocks are, they're all flat lying. Uh, Mother Nature has never had a chance to beat them up. They're very, very young. I mean, some of the rocks are so young, they're, they're still flowing. Uh, you know, they're red lava coming down the hill. But uh, here the rocks are older and they've been contorted and beat up and turned upside down. And uh, for a geologist, just, this is really exciting turf. Jack said beat up just like us old guys. <laughs> But that, that, that spot right over there, Jack, is mm -hmm. one of the most exciting features of this whole canyon. Oh, I agree. I want to get some good pictures of that. It's flipped upside down. And that puts that over there flipped over the other way. And look how that yeah. piece up there is straddled both directions. And that is so weird. Yeah. That is so unique. Yeah. This is the upside. I teach at University of Hawaii, but the problem is, I wish we could bring students over here where they can see this, oh, this yeah. kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, poor kids in Hawaii, they never get to see rocks that aren't lying flat. Well, if, if, you ever, if they ever come over here, send them to me. Oh. You know, in a lot of, a lot of parts of the world, uh, you can't see down. You know, there's pasture lands and whatnot, Monta mapping of Montana. The uh -huh. only place you could tell what rocks were underneath were where they're at home. It's because the, the ants, ants bring, bring it up. up. Way down far. Wow. Wow. No, this is sand, like, we don't have sand like this. There's quartz and all kinds of stuff that we just don't have in Hawaii. You know, the, the micro world, whether it's micro flowers or micro anything, it, it's really much more exciting. People you get all excited about looking at big rocks, but the small rocks are really pretty fun too. There's a little bitty quartz crystals in here. Wow. I'm going to break some of what I want to show. I want to get some of this broken off. 
but uh, take a look with my hand lens. Look at the, the little. <laughs> oh, the, I'm going to have to start carrying my glass with me. Okay. Like that. But look, I mean, there's so many different. I'm going to have to get your hands. You got some lots. Oh, so just gorgeous. aren't they beautiful? The actually, smaller, the smaller actually, stones sometimes are more actually perfect. Actually shaped, actually shaped in in beautiful crystalline form. Yeah, the little ones. Wow. The little micro crystals. <sighs> anyway, you asked me what I'm excited about. I'm excited about the fact that you've got all these different minerals over here in in this area. You know. Over in Hawaii, we have uh, about two or three minerals that you can recognize here. I mean, I'm looking at this little handful of dirt, and there's probably 20 minerals sitting here. Beautiful mica crystals, quartz crystals, feldspar. Yeah, look at this nice. Nothing like this in Hawaii. I don't know if I don't know if uh, you know ordinary mortals think rocks are beautiful, but I mean they look at diamonds and something say they're beautiful. But to me, this is nice. That's really a beautiful rock. You think of the stories it's got to tell. <laughs> I'm petting the rock. Nice rock. It's all kind of porphyry, you know, it's been heated up so that the mafic metal has been turned to chloride and epidote. That's, this was once a lava flow. <laughs> Exactly which way is, is right side up when Mother Nature deposited these rocks. If they're upside down or right side up, it's not obvious. Oh, what, I, I look at everything. I'm not looking at any one thing at all. Really. Not me, I'm just looking at these neat rocks. They've come from so many different places. I haven't, had, I haven't had a chance to look at rocks like these in 40 years. I'm just thinking about the incredible history. I mean, there's, there's millions, there's probably hundreds of millions of years of history here. I mean, although this, these particular sediments are probably only, uh, you know, 10 or 20,000 years old, they're pretty young. Uh, the individual rocks, the, the clasts, some of them are millions, hundreds of millions of years old. They've all come from different places, and each each stone has a different story to tell about the mountain ranges it used to be part of, about the landslides it's seen, and the, the different rivers it's flowed down. And, and the Colorado River can't really carry coarse rocks anymore. It's, it's a lazy, slow river. These were deposited by fast-running streams, by you know major floods, by. So I think these just, you know, were rocks that, you know, the, the Coachella Valley is a low spot and water runs to the low spots. And consequently, it's from the high mountain ranges that surrounded this. It's, those mountain ranges have been eroding and, and providing sediments to the valley for uh, as long as the San Andreas has created, you know, uh, depressions like the, like the valley and the Salton Sink. Source, almost all of its source area are sediments, limestones, and you know, like the rocks in the Grand Canyon. These rocks are granites and gneisses and metamorphic rocks that the Colorado River wouldn't be carrying. These kind of sedimentary rocks 
wouldn't have folded like this when they were dry if they'd been dried out. So I'm thinking that it was folded very quickly after deposition when they were still wet in plastic. Because they actually they folded like like mud, like wet liquid mud plastics. If it had been rigid, you know, if you tried to bend these rocks, they'd break up. You brought up a very good point that I hadn't thought about. That, that if they were not wet, they would have broken apart. Exactly, exactly. So they behave what we call plastically. So uh, did this happen in a time when this, this whole area at one time was covered with redwood forests? So was this the time when the soil was very damp and wet, which we're talking several thousand years ago, yeah. Yeah. is when this occurred when the ground was wet? Yeah, yeah. Or at, at, at least in a place where it was way below water table where it could have stayed wet before the San Andreas started to break it up. Because if the rocks had dried out, they would have, as you said, they would See, have. They would I'm have learning up. something, folks. <laughs> Jack no. has brought up a very good point that these but, rocks, <laughs> most of them had to be wet not to break apart, like this shape in here had to have been wet. <laughs> these aren't my kind of rocks. I'm you just sort what? of making my best I don't know guesses. what I'm talking about either, so here's two old guys that don't know what we're talking about we're making no, a show. No, it's more than that. It's more than that. I mean, that's what geologists do. A lot of, no, I mean, our scientists You don't do know that. what's going on exactly. You propose a theory and you discuss it. And that's but, what we're doing. We're coming up with a theory. But geologists learn from each other constantly. Yep. That's what it's yep. all about. Yep. You've written a book. I've written a book. <laughs> we yep. learn from each other. Yep. Yep. And, you know, uh, it's fun arguing. Some people sometimes, you know, we're doing it as friends. We're not arguing. But, you know, geologists can get pretty mad at one another. No, you're full of baloney. Come on. Obviously, it's this way. Well, I liked you but, yesterday, uh, Jack, but I don't like you today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but the point is, it, it's just the, the contrast of ideas. That's where truth is found. But of course, you know, the problem is, if we had a third person here, he'd have a different <laughs> a different perspective yet. This is Conrad Vargas, the old desert naturalist. I'm again signing off from the beautiful Box Canyon with my dear friend Jack Lockwood, who's from Hawaii. And he's just been so excited today with what he's seen <laughs> here in the valley. Excited and appreciative. We will do that. <laughs>